In this video, we'll be looking at the process of meiosis. Let's get right to it. Meiosis is divided into two, that is meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis is a process of cell division that is exclusively used for the production of gametes. Under meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, there are four stages, just like there was in mitosis. In mitosis, we have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And that is the same case here, except we have the number attached to the end of it. So for example, in meiosis 1, we have prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and telophase 1. And the same happens in meiosis 2 as well. We have prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and telophase 2. Between telophase 1 and the beginning of meiosis 2, we have the division of the cytoplasm. That means we have cytokinesis. Let's focus in on meiosis 1. In meiosis 1, first, just like in mitosis, we begin with prophase, and this is called prophase 1. In prophase 1, just like in prophase, the first thing that happens is the chromatins will start to shorten and thicken so that they are visible under the microscope. And then something unique to prophase 1 occurs, that is, the homologous chromosomes will start to form pairs, and these are known as bivalent or tetrads. The homologous chromosomes are the chromosomes with the same structure. They code for the same characteristics, the same traits, one from the paternal parent and one from the maternal parent, and they form a pair. This process of forming the pair is known as synapsis. And when they form a pair, a sister chromatid from each of the chromosomes, the homologous chromosomes, will cross over. And this process is called crossing over. So crossing over occurs. This again is unique only to prophase 1. It doesn't happen in any other stage. What happens during crossing over is that genetic information is exchanged. So at the point where they cross, this point here is known as the chiasma. The point of crossing over is called the chiasma. And what happens is part of the gene is exchanged. So chromosomes then will form a new combination of genes. This is very important in a genetic variation. And then the rest that happens also happens in prophase. So nuclear membrane disintegrates, also occurred in prophase of mitosis. Nucleolus disappears, centrioles move to the opposite poles, and the spindle fibers start to form. All this also occurs in prophase of mitosis. So the only thing that is unique to prophase 1 is this. And then after prophase 1, of course, we go to metaphase 1. In metaphase 1, once again, chromosomes are aligned, just like in mitosis. However, in this case, we still have the equatorial plane, but it is the homologous chromosomes that are aligned, rather than individual chromosomes themselves. Homologous chromosomes are aligned at the equatorial plane. Each chromosome from the pair is tied to a spindle fiber from one of the poles of the cell. In mitosis, when we only have a single chromosome in the middle, the spindle fiber, both spindle fibers are attached to the same chromosome. However, now we have the pair, the homologous chromosomes there, and the spindle fiber only attaches to one on each side. And that is important for the next phase, anaphase 1. So then the centromere does not separate in this case. Both the chromosomes of the homologous chromosome pair are still intact, and so they do not separate. And so the centromere which is the part that holds together the two sister chromatids, does not separate. It is still intact. Sister chromatids are still together. After that, we go on to anaphase 1. In anaphase, what happens is the chromosomes are going to start to separate. So the difference here, what is unique in anaphase 1 is, instead of a single chromosome splitting into two sister chromatids, it is the homologous chromosomes that move. So the homologous chromosomes are separated and they are now no longer called homologous chromosomes as they move to each of the poles of the cell. That's exactly what's going to happen here. Homologous chromosomes separate and the spindle fiber is the one that helps to accomplish this. By shortening and contracting, it pulls the homologous chromosomes to the opposite poles of the cell. So each one will end up at one pole. And at this point, the cell is going to become 
a haploid cell. That is, from the 2n number of chromosomes, the number of chromosomes is going to be halved. This is where that happens. The homologous chromosomes separate and therefore now each cell is only going to receive one of the two chromosomes. This is where the number of chromosomes halves. After anaphase, we have telophase. Telophase 1. And what occurs in telophase 1 is exactly the same as what occurs in telophase of mitosis. That is, the homologous chromosomes will arrive at the opposite poles. Each pole now contains half. This is unique to telophase 1. And then, the nuclear membrane is formed again, nucleoli reappear, spindle fibers will disappear, and telophase is followed by cytokinesis. So what is unique to telophase 1 is that now we began with four chromosomes at the beginning. We have ended up with only two chromosomes on each side. And what is very telling that this is meiosis and not mitosis is the fact that crossing over has occurred. And this can be seen in all the diagrams of meiosis 1. This is how you tell that this is definitely a process of meiosis and not mitosis. So after telophase 1, cytokinesis occurs and then we go on to meiosis 2. Meiosis 2. So from meiosis 1, the single parent cell has become two daughter cells. And each of the daughter cell is going to undergo meiosis 2. Let's begin with prophase 2. The chromosome is still made up of two sister chromatids, joined at the central mere. Nuclear membrane disintegrates, as you can see here. Nucleolus disappears. And then centriole will start to move to the opposite poles. And the spindle fibers will start to form. And then we go on to metaphase 2. In metaphase 2, what happens is the same. The chromosomes are aligned at the equatorial plane, just like in mitosis. Centrals arrive at the opposite poles, chromosomes are aligned, spindle fibers are attached to the chromosomes at the centromere. So again, in this case, both spindle fibers are attached to the centromere on either side. And then, metaphase ends when the centromere begins to divide. So in this case, the centromere does divide. The centromere splits. And how does that happen? Once again, it's due to the action of the spindle fibers. Centromere divides into two. Sister chromatids will separate. Spindle fiber shortens and contracts. The sister chromatids are now pulled to the opposite poles of the cells. So again, it is the sister chromatids that are pulled to the opposite poles. In the case of anaphase 1, it was the homologous chromosomes that were separated and pulled to the opposite poles. But in this case, each chromosome is split into two. The sister chromatids are the ones that are pulled to the poles. And therefore, in this case, the number of chromosomes is not halved again. The number of chromosomes is only halved once in anaphase 1. In anaphase 2, the haploid number will still remain at the end. And so, finally, anaphase ends when the sister chromatids arrive at the poles. And then we go on to telophase 2. In telophase 2, it is exactly the same. What happens is the sister chromatids arrive are now called daughter chromosomes. Each one is a daughter chromosome. Each pole now contains one complete set of chromosomes, as in the beginning of the cell. We started with two chromosomes, we end with two chromosomes as well. And then the chromosomes become fine chromatin threads, so they unravel. And then nuclear membrane is formed again. Nucleoli reappear. Spindle fibers will disappear. And telophase 2 is followed by cytokinesis. So earlier, as I mentioned, two cells at the end of meiosis 1. Each cell will undergo meiosis 2. Therefore, these two cells will divide and form four cells. At the end of meiosis 2, we have four haploid cells. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you've liked it. I hope you've learned. If you have, please do help me by hitting that like button. Do share this with all your friends who need it. I'll be producing at least one video a week. I hope to see you guys in the next one.